often be good at that. You know, we talk about how a man thinks. I want to go to Proverbs. If I could, chapter 23. I don't know if Bob said there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but it, his ways will always lead him to destruction if it is not built upon the Word of God. I've had people you know, accuse me of being judgmental, and I want you to know something. If Bob thinks this or says this, disregard it. But if the Word of God says it, Amen. we all ought to believe it. Amen? That's right. So there's a difference between me judging somebody and the Word of God being clear and true. And there are a lot of people that uh, are having difficulties. I Just for the fun of it this last week, and I'm going to get into my sermon, but I was listening and going through uh, uh, five uh, signs of, that a pastor is a tyrant. Uh, you know, it's just for fun. And, and some of them are very legitimate, I want you to know. And people can be tyrants. And, and that, that, that is inexcusable, and God will judge you for that. But I come across one girl, and she was saying that I'm a free spirit. I belong to the to the body of Christ, and nobody tells me what to do because I think God, the Holy Spirit, can tell me. And I began to look at that, and I'm seeing such a narcissistic outlook even in the church. And what we need to understand and realize is that each and every one of us need to hear from what the Lord is saying, even for those that God appoints to speak into our lives. Amen. And we should ponder those things and to say, Lord, uh, I, I need to hear that. Um, but we should all be willing to, 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 uh, to receive correction from each other. You know, there's no hierarchy in the body. The Word of God is it. Jesus is the, is the high priest. Can you say amen with me? We should always welcome, and that's why David said, Search my heart, O Lord, and see if there be any wicked way in me. He didn't trust himself, nor should you, nor should I. No. We should always trust in Al Shaddai, no, right. in the Lord, yes. our God. Amen? And God has brought us together as gifts of each other. Amen. And that is to say, Lord, and I, I, I know what Barbara said this morning was so true, and that is that we withhold the word then that judgment's upon us. We need to be able to speak the word of God boldly, not, not insensitively. Boldly does not mean you're insensitive. You see, we should, we should weep over people before we even correct people. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. And I tell you this right now, we should have a posture of weeping, but yet we should have a mouth filled with the truth. In Proverbs 23, 7 through 23, it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he, to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten, shall thou vomit it up. And lose thy sweet words. Speak not uh, in the ear of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy word. What does that mean? It means the Bible said in the New Testament, cast your pearls not among swine, for they shall trample them under and turn on you. And I think what David said last week is that he was going to the LGBTQ and whatever like, uh, words after that. And he said that he was completely shut down and attacked and done. He said, you know what? I'm done going to them. You know, there's a time when you just need to say, I'm just going to walk away from that. Uh, th that. That's not helping anybody. In other words, we need to be careful. And that's what Solomon here is saying. He said, remove not the old landmarks and enter not into the fields uh, of the fatherless. Um, and enter not into the fields of the fathers, for their Redeemer is mighty. He shall plead their cause with thee. Apply thine heart unto the instruction, and thine ear to the words of, the, of knowledge. Withhold not correction from the child, 
For if thou besettest him with the rod, he shall not die. You know, a lot of, a lot of kids today are in trouble because the parent didn't correct them. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, one form of child abuse is not always getting beaten or spoken uh, bad to. Child abuse can also be not speaking at all to them. Right. Or correcting them. In this time, fathers, you need to hear that. And, and that we, we need to correct. I remember my cousin, when he was young, um, he, would, uh, he would go out and he would act out. And he was playing demolition and derp with bicycles, which Ben boys did. That's why old antique uh, bicycles, if they were a boy's bike, they're worth more. Because it was pretty traditional for boys to become <laughs> demolition and derbyists. And they would destroy their bikes. And, but anyway, uh, uh, my cousin, uh, his dad hollered out to him and told him not to do something. He just looked at him and kept on, kept on doing his thing. And the dad went out and he grabbed him and, and pulled him off the bike. And you know what my cousin said to him? He said, it's about time you stood up and become a father. You know, sometimes I think when it is, there's such a lack of correction, right. or oh, we want the wife to be the bad one. Yeah. That's, that's well, let that one be the bad one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'll tell you what, that's not godly. It's not biblical to put to pawn it off on the other. We all need to take our place rightfully. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, men need to take their place. And I never meant to say that this morning, but I did. He said, for their Redeemer, this is in verse 11 of um, Proverbs 23. He said, for their Redeemer is mighty. He shall plead their cause with thee. Applying thy heart unto instruction in thy ears to the words of knowledge. Withhold not correction from the child. For if thou besettest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt uh, beat him with a rod. <laughs> Amen. And shall deliver his soul from hell. Now we realize that, you know, corporal punishment is, is, is biblical at a certain age. You know, I mean, you can't ground a two-year-old. <laughs> He's already grounded. Uh, you know, but a little swab on the back end sometimes is the best way. And I'm not telling you, you know, how to parent. But, but I think if you've got your 13-year-old daughter and you put her over your knee and give her a whip, and I think now, you know what, maybe... We need to change our strategy. Now there are other things that we can do to imply a discipline. Can you say amen to me? I heard of a father one time that amen. talked about taking his 13-year-old daughter and, and, and giving her a spanking. And, and then he said after that, he said, um, and that hurt me more than it did her. <laughs> and somebody spoke up and said, uh, how, how much did it hurt? <laughs> but anyway, that person was kind of like Agonistic, but I, I just want you to realize something that when it speaks there, it doesn't mean, you know, it's saying wherever it hurts that person, could be a phone be taken away for a month, it could be uh, something else. But forms of discipline that would show the child that they're in danger because children are born, and so was I, and I still may struggle with it. In rebellion, we're, we're immediately we resist. The police officer stops us, and what do we do? Well, couldn't you go find somebody breaking the law? I was only going ten over. Yeah. You know, we all have attitudes toward discipline, but how many know we need it? Yes. I know a man who went to Haiti. He said, "You wouldn't believe it in Haiti." He said, "They don't have stop signs." They don't have anything. And you, you, you're just, your heart's just a beat when you're driving because it's chaotic. You know, I appreciate stop signs. I don't always abide that. I should, shouldn't I? Amen. Sometimes we do those California stops. I guess what they are, but they're the California. But you know that when you look and you keep rolling a little gently around the corner. Um, but what you realize in all of this is that, is that rules are for our benefit. If they're just, if, if, you know. And what we need to understand in this is that we need to train our children 
And let me tell you what, are we not children? I'm a children of the Lord. You know, God is still is still training me. You know, he can, he can still ground a 65-year-old man. Why? Because he loves me. The Bible says that a child that is not chastened or corrected isn't a child at all. I welcome his correction. I need him. And I'll tell you, every child needs parents. I, had, I knew a, a child whose, whose parents had, had allowed the child... To, to sleep with their boyfriend in their own house when they were teenagers. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're just cool people. You know, we, we just, no. you, you know what I mean? And you know what that daughter said to the parent? She said, I resent that you allowed that to happen. Mm-hmm. Because now what? She goes in the grocery store, she sees another guy, and she's with her husband. How do you think she's going to feel? See, that, that's why correction is so necessary. And when we don't correct, we injure the person that we don't correct. Right. <clears throat> My son, verse 15 of 23 of Proverbs. My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. Yea, my reign shall rejoice, uh, when my lips speak right things. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. I remember my mother was quite sure. But there was a guy in school and his father, he, he used to buy marijuana for him. How cool! Wow! I remember going up in his room and he had all these psychedelic. I said, where did you get all these psychedelic posters and stuff? Of course, this is back in the 70s. And he said, oh, my dad got all these for me. And the big speakers and the stereo and all that. And I'm thinking to myself, wow! You got it made. Did he? No. He was being cheated. Because that stuff will destroy. And, and we need to, to realize this. Thank God for the Holy Ghost that can give us joy. He goes on to say, let not thine heart envy sinners. Uh-huh. See, I envied a sinner, but I didn't realize that the way, that way leads to destruction. But be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Wow. How is it to fear the Lord all day long? All day long. To fear. The Bible said the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. But when you live in a generation that won't even be corrected, when you live in a generation where it's the worldwide church, never mind the local church. I mean, know that the local church is so important today. We need each other. The Bible says, forsake not the assembly of yourself. As the custom of some are, especially in the last days. Why? Because there's going to be a spirit in the last days that I'm my own and I can do what I want. I'm a Christian and I get to go wherever I decide to go. What about the Bible says the steps of the Lord are ordered? Amen. To those that are good, to those that are righteous. He said the steps of a good man are right man order the Lord. So what we need to realize is what are not my own. I'm bought with a price. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that assuring? Verse 19 of Proverbs 23, Hear thou my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. Be not among wine rivers, among riotous eaters of the flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. Have we not seen that on the streets, begging and, and, and seeing all that? 
Because that is where it always ends up. You know what the answer is? The answer is Christ, not a $20 bill. Yeah, right. That's right. Amen. Peter says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto you in the name of Jesus. Yes. Rise up and walk. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's it. I was in the park one day, and I saw this man sitting under a tree doing drugs. And I went over to him, and I told him, I said, you know, Jesus loves you. He said, get out of here. The next day, he's on the street corner. And I'm thinking, oh, I remember your words from yesterday. Hmm. <laughs> I'm keeping my wallet closed. You reject the word of Christ. You reject the way. You reject the, the one who paid the price for you. How can I help? Them? How can I throw money at that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we shouldn't have compassion? Of course we should have compassion. Somebody was on my door in the middle of the night and they were freezing to death. I'm not going to say too bad for you. I'm going to do what I can to help that individual. Right. But my mission is Christ. Yeah. My mission is to speak the gospel. My mission is to bring the word of God. My mission is that people would be transformed right. from that present situation to the place where God can bring them. You cannot sustain the life of a person who wants to go the other way. What will happen is they'll rob you of everything you got. That's right. Right. They'll drain you emotionally and physically and, and spiritually and, and, and financially. Yeah. They'll drain you. <laughs> well, we have to do a whole thing with the homeless here in these cities and and, and, and more or less, I was, I was told that if you don't open your house and bring them all into your house, then, then, then you're going to have the blood on your hands. I'm saying, no, no, no. I need to give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. If they reject it, it's their decision. That's right. That is correct. Amen. We're not called to be doormats or taking advantage of. No. Jesus was never taking advantage of. In fact, he got upset with them one day. They were falling. He said, look, he said, let me tell you this right now. You follow me for your belly's sake. That's right. Amen. That's it. Insensitive? No. I don't think so. Again. I think what Jesus was doing is assessing the situation. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there are times in our life where we've got to say, Lord God, am I, am I uh, helping this person or am I enabling them in their Weaknesses and their sins. That's right. We had a lady in the church many years ago. She was a great pianist. She was a mission. She was a, a worship leader in the church. She was very gifted. But she would get behind in her mortgage, and then the people in the church would come together and collect the money for her to to do that. The second time, my wife and I went over and visited with her. And the Lord gave us clear direction, things that she should do in order to, to stop the curse against her finances and also where her responsibilities were. But dare I correct her. I corrected her and I told her, I said, this is the third time. Behind in mortgage three months. Third time. And I see people in the church gathering together to try to bail her out again. And this is what I said to her. I said, listen. I said, you have no business facing the people and worshiping and leading them in worship. You cannot even control your own household. Right. Yep. Was it wrong? No. Let me tell you what happened. I split the church. I had about 25 people. Twenty, I, I don't, no exaggeration. She called these people, said, I hollered at her. <laughs> oh, she, did, she was in tears and how, how bad it was. You see, she didn't want correction. Right. 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 And it split the church. Right. It hurt me. Right. I know what you mean, Barbara, when you say, man, this, this hurts. It hurts. Yeah. Sometimes in our own family, it hurts. It hurts when a, a child turns their back on you because you, you dared to tell them the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. 
It hurts when people walk out of the church because you dared to speak to somebody. And I never hollered at that person, and they never even asked me if I hollered it. They just said, she said it, and we believe it. Well, then that's, that's your gospel. Right. I could go on. I've got so many stories, but that's fine. But what we realize in all this, let me, let me sum this up. In verse 23, let's go to 22 of Proverbs 23. It says, Hearken unto thy father that begot thee, and despise not the mother when she is old. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. When it says buy the truth, what it means, invest where the truth is. If it's from your parents, invest in them. Amen. We're living in an age today where elderly people have forgotten. When we didn't realize that mom and dad were there. How many have had a teenager to come say, so you've never did anything for me? Well, let me think here for a minute. How many times in the middle of the night I get up to give you a bottle? How many times did I rock you? How many times... You know, and on and on and on. And who who bought you the clothing that you're wearing and go through all of that? But you see, that's, see, that's the devil that gets into the mind. And that's where it's your situation. It's your opportunity to teach. Mm -hmm. To let people know, yes, it's a sacrifice. You know, life is a sacrifice in many ways. What we need to realize is what it says in Proverbs, and I don't know that I want to get too deep into this. I think I'm going to carry this on next week. But as a man thinketh, so is he. Who are you? That's right. Who are you? And I think that is something that you need to address. No one else can address it for you. I mean, we can tell you what the Scripture says. Am I just a poor, disadvantaged individual? Or am I a child of God? Am I born of the Spirit? Are the words that I speak powerful through the Spirit of Jesus Christ? We'll talk next week about, about the word power there and what it means in, in the Koine Greek. We'll look at some of these things next week. But what I want you to understand and know is that God, he loves you. Right. And not only does he want to speak to you, he wants to speak through you. He wants you to be able to speak to the mountain that, that, that you've been praying about for a long time. And, and there's going to be a time God says, okay, I'm done hearing you know, sometimes people come back with the same problem over and over and over and over and over. And then we just give the place, I can't take this anymore. Mm -hmm. I had a, a great counselor teach me one time. He said, let them come to you three times. After that, give them some homework. He said, if they're serious, they'll do the homework. If not, you won't see them again. In other words, make them accountable. Let me tell you this. What does the word say? Who are you in Christ? Have you, do you have an identity crisis? Right. Are you the needy one? Or are you the departer of the faith? Right. You see, do you pray like this or do you pray like this? Mm -hmm. I pray with one hand like this and the other like this. I want to receive of God, but I want to impart what God has given me. See, that's what it means to preach the gospel. And what we realize in this is you will go through hard times. You will do. If you speak the truth, your heart will be broken. Yeah. There's, 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 there's no way around that. You know, what we do... Many times, as we get a word from the Lord, but then we try to find a way to make it smooth. We put it through the smoothie machine. <laughs> Jesus didn't put his words through the smoothie machine no. yeah. to make it a palatable drink. 
He looked at him and said, unless you drink my blood, eat my flesh, you have no part in me. He didn't go on for 15 minutes after and explain it. He figured if they're of me, they'll receive it. If they're not, they won't. You see, that's the way the gospel is. The gospel is the good news for those who, who embrace it, but it is not even welcome to those who reject it. The Bible says the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them who perish. Right. You, you, you have to realize, hey, let me tell you this right now, does it mean that when you preach the, the gospel and they reject it, that it had no validity? No, it did. That's right. They'll remember the day of judgment. They'll remember. Not that I want them. Not, not that I hope for that. Paul had three types of people. He had those that were almost persuaded. He had those that were completely persuaded. And he had those that were completely persuaded. You're always going to have those three in your audience. But I'm going to tell you this right now. Don't withhold the word of God. Be bold, people, in this last day. This is what our whole mission is. Our mission is not to grow the church. Our mission is to preach the word. When my focus is on growing the church, my focus is on earthly things. We need to be on heavenly things. What does my father call me to do? He called me into the world. What for? Just as Barbara said, she began to go down the beat and tell people about impending danger. I had a chance to go. I had a neighbor that was uh, up uh, in up north that was uh, building a little road out there, and I stopped. You know, and I think sometimes people think I'm a little flaky up there. That's fine. I'm sure I am to the world. If people start running now. I had one. I don't want to go there. It's just, it's just crazy. But I stopped, and how you doing? And. Uh, his wife was there. She was very intent, by the way. She stopped what she's doing when I started talking about Jesus, and she came right over. Oh, she said, we go to church. We go to the congregation of church, but her husband's doing this. What does that mean? <laughs> go away. You're bugging me. <laughs> so so I, I was watching his, his expressions. And I was talking about, you know, I said how Russia's down there. And I said, you know, the end time, you know, that God uh, predicted these things would come. And what's happening? That, and, and I'm beginning, and and and, um, and I think she reminds you of congregational. In other words, we don't go that deep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit too deep. But the fact of it is, is we can't shut this thing up. No. We've got to say, God, give me wisdom. Let me share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean we have to be insensitive. It doesn't mean that I have to go out on the street with a with with a, a oversized Bible and 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 I'm say that's wrong either. God bless him. I was up uh, at one place north and this guy was sitting on our park bench with a big sign, Jesus saved. I beat my horn and waved. Hey, good for you, brother. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm glad somebody's out there. Doing that. But it doesn't have to look like that. No. The Bible says that when you're in the way with your enemy, don't say everything. Conceal the matter. Mm-hmm. In other words, we do need wisdom. But don't let timid, if being timid keep you either. From what God calls you to do. I'm going to close with this. Many, many years ago, when I was going through a rehab program in Bangor, I had a Gideon's Bible and I was trying to make sense of life. They were telling me that there's a higher power. I don't know what it is. And I asked, I even asked the counselor, what is a higher power? He said, anything you decided to do. I'm thinking, boy, that seems pretty weak. So I'm, I'm going through the program, and I'm, one night, it was about 1130 at night, and I had the Gideon's Bible out. And I was trying to look at it, because I had a room by myself. And all of a sudden, the nurse 
walked in, and I shot that thing and hit it like it was a Playboy magazine. I mean, I didn't want to get caught without seeing my hands. I was, I was, I did, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he looked at me with a long face. He said, could I share something with you? He said, I want you to know that I would be fired if you reveal what I want to share with you. So I really need your confidence in this. I said, sir, you go ahead. And he said, number one, he said, that book that you just hid, that's the answer to all of your problems. Amen. See, he had to take a risk. But they, they were calculated. That's what I mean by using wisdom. Now, if I shut the door and said, get out, I never would have known what he had to say, and he wouldn't have said it. Because the Bible said, behold, Jesus stands at the door and knocks. Yes. So he shared with me the gospel of Jesus Christ. I found out later that he was a Pentecostal preacher from up in Blue Hill. But he was a nurse. And he had a chance to tell me, and I knew immediately after he said that I need to get into a Christian program. I go to a place in Portland. That's where I call. And I don't mean to be giving my testimony, but I called there and they said, we'd love to have you come. I lived there for four years. I met my wife there. But I thank God that he began to lead me immediately as I embraced him and embraced his word. Amen. I want you to know this one thing. This word will make you free. This word will liberate. This word will liberate you, and this word will do the work that only the word can do in your life as you apply it. Because the Bible said we're kings and priests in Revelation. What does that mean? What is the what, what is the, the kingly part? Is that we rule in this world through the authority of Jesus Christ. The priestly part is that we apply the word of God. That's what a priest does. A priest takes the hyssop. And he, he dips it in the bowl right. and he puts it upon the doorpost, upon the uh, uh, upon the doorpost of the lentil. You see, the priest is the one who applies. I want you to know something. You as the priest need to apply this word of God to your life. It's your duty. So we receive it. Would you please stand with me? I, I'm letting the Holy Spirit have his way here today. How many brethren have his way than Bob's way? Amen. It's the only way. Hallelujah. But I want you to know something. I think these last two weeks we've had some excellent speakers. Amen. I think the word of Sister Blodgett and uh, loved her husband. He came quite often here. But I've really seen her blossom. I've seen the power of God in her life. You see, God harvested Jerry. He was bigger than life. And when God harvested him to be with him, where he is now, the sunshine was able to come into a smaller plant. And that began to nourish. Amen. And I want to tell you something right now. I'm watching in her life a power. Amen. How many of we should never limit God? No. Yes, Lord. God wants to do a work in each one of our lives. He's not. The, the Bible even said, Peter said, I find that God is no respecter of persons. He loves you. That's right. That's right. You're not second class. No. And that's what we need to do. We need to get that mind in us. I am blessed. I am blessed. Every day that I live here, I am blessed. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's bow our head in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord, yes, for this Lord. proverb, Father. That as a man thinketh, so is he. Lord, let that be in our hearts in a positive manner, not a negative. Hallelujah. Let us have the mind of Christ in us. Amen. Lord, if you did not, being equal with God, you did not see, uh, see it uh, bad to, to reduce yourself to a servant. How much more should we be like you? Not only to serve you, but to serve each other. And to let the word go forward. In Jesus' name.
Lord, we love you and we praise you and we exalt you. And we ask that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you, Lord God, for, for, the, for the nation of Israel. We pray for them, for their safety. Lord God, that your hand be upon them. We pray for our nation, for the foolishness that we're seeing in our in, in, in our presidency and in, in, in Congress and in the Senate. Lord, we just pray for our nation that it would be turned to you and that we would repent. And Lord God, that we'd have a heart after you, I pray. We thank you for the Spirit of the Lord that is in this place this morning that we feel. And for the word that went forth, we ask it all and praise you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you. All of you out on Facebook, God bless you. And you too.